Hello, everyone, and welcome to LDM Radio Sports Talk, a sports show that talks about current events and other topics relatable to sports fans. My name is Alfonso Caldero, and joining me this week is Harris Berger. Thanks for having me. And the stamp, uh, the uh, Wesley Segundo. Right. So, first, we're going to start off with a question from last week: MLS soccer. So, on August 11th, the Portland Timbers beat um, Orlando City two to one to become the MLS is back 2020 tournament champions. So it was that long ago that uh, we didn't talk about it. Really? Yeah. So what? Congratulations to Portland and the city of Portland, who probably uh, about 20% of them cared about it maybe a little bit. I mean, <laughs> what is this? The state of Washington, right? Oh, wait, no, the state of Portland, right? Oregon. Yeah. Oh, Oregon. Portland, oh, Oregon, okay. yeah. What else do they have up there? Well, they got the Trailblazers. Who didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, yeah. And Championships, that, championship. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's what they got. They, I mean, they, but then it's going to be like walking into a party like, you know, like 30 years ago. Like you're the 30-year-old jock from back then. Like, hey, you know, I just smashed this chick from like <laughs> 10 years ago. Okay, good job, bro, but that's old. Nobody wants to hear about that. <laughs> that's it. But they yeah, but congrats. Uh, they made it happen for, for, the, for a few people who love the MLS. That was uh, probably old news to you. You're like, oh, finally they talk about it, you know. That, that, that's it. We, we've arrived. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll get some MLS viewers, I guess. Possibly, possibly. Um, so, uh, we're going to jump into the NBA Finals. Right now, we are in Game uh, Game 5. is going to come up on Friday. The Lakers are up three games to one in the series over the Miami Heat. Uh, thoughts on that? Wow. Are they going to come back? Are the Heat going to come back and make a difference is uh jimmy butler gonna be like the only one that's gonna be carrying the team what happened to tyler hero however you pronounce his name hero 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 sandwich i, I think i think they're doing what they can but uh, uh goran Dragic hasn't played since game one so uh they're a little shorthanded there and then it's just not working out um i mean the lakers are just too good you know like they got this all-star team yeah, the, the Heat are dead, let's be honest. <laughs> I think that the, it, the time's just running out. Winter's coming on them. That Heat's going to dry out quick. I think Jimmy Buckets can't be Jimmy Buckets. Then this team has no shot. I think yeah. the Lakers are just too good. Unless Tyler Hero, unless Jimmy Buckets, unless they have career games again, which is what it took for them to win the game that they won, I think this is over. Yeah, Jimmy Butler, 40 points in game three on uh, 14 for 20 shooting in a triple-double. I mean, he can't sustain that every single time, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, they got a puncher's chance. You know, I, I thought it would be Lakers in five. That looks to be what is trending to happen. Um, and the Lakers are going to have the Black Mamba jerseys for uh, game five, and they're 4-0 and oh with those jerseys on. I mean, I don't mean to make a, like, a tasteless joke, but is that going to be, like, the significance of the Heat's funeral that night? <laughs> Wearing all black? I well, think just having Mamba in the building, that's all that's what it's going to take. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, it's just it's, it's the storyline, the way the Lakers are going. But, I mean, you know, aside from anything else, like this Lakers team was just fully loaded. I mean, you got Rondo, you got, like, Howard coming off, Dwight Howard coming off the bench. I mean, come on now. You know, this is not – this is like a video game. <laughs> um, so that's going on there in the NBA. So by, uh, by the next show, we'll be congratulating a champion, and we pretty much – we could bet the mortgage that it would be the Lakers that'll uh, take that home. Twenty twenty is a weird year. That's all I have to say. Anything could really happen at this point. I, I would love at least another game. You know, get it like you know a good series going. Yeah. But uh, I that, mean, if you want that, you're gonna have to get that uh, that IG skank for uh, Tyler Hero to get back going. <laughs> we all heard about that. But no, it's, uh, f- fill us in. Oh, so uh, he's been like. Since he had the the previous round, he was, like, carrying the heat. It turns out he was getting a little smashy-smashy from a, from an Instagram model that somehow got bubble access. And I guess since that access is denied, he's not doing anything right now. Okay! All right, so. I mean, you never know. Jimmy Buckets could come in and take over, and we could see what happens. It, I, I just don't see it with the way that LeBron's playing, the way that 
AD's playing. I think this is just about wrapped up. We'll see, though. I mean, the Heat did make it a game late. Tyler Hero hitting a last-second three to, to cover the spread in that back door was tough for all those Lakers backers. But, hey, we'll see what happens. I think the Lakers didn't like that last-second shot, and I think that – they come out firing tomorrow night, and they're, they're going to be ready to go. Yeah, this one's going to be a perfect Friday night, end of the season, you know, party all weekend for uh, people in Los Angeles. At least they don't have yeah, to go yeah. far when they say they're going to Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> all right, so we're going to stay on L.A., and we're going to move on to baseball. So there's, uh, there's some incredible symmetry going on with the uh, League Divisional Series right now. We have the AL East having uh, their own matchup, the AL West, and then the NL East and the NL West. So, like, every central team is gone in, in this tournament. Um, and it's just the one team versus the first seed and the second seed of each division just going against each other. And um, in the uh, championship series, we're just going to have the best in the East and the best in the West from each uh, league going against each other. And then to see who's, like, really the top king of that league Yep. after a while. Yeah, yeah, just uh, it, it's pretty crazy the way it worked out. So the, uh, the first, the, the division-winning Dodgers are playing the second, um, the uh, NL West uh, second seed Padres, the San Diego Padres. And right now the Dodgers are up two zip in the series. Yeah, I mean, the MLB couldn't have asked for a better setup here. You got all the division rivals going at it to their spot in the in the conference championship or the league championship series, I, I should say. And a lot of bad blood. You saw it last night with Manny Machado, Mookie Betts. That goes back to their Orioles, Red Sox days, and uh -huh. uh, with and with PD on the mat, with PD at second and things like that. So there's a lot of bad blood between all these teams, and we remember what happened between the Rays and the Yankees earlier this year. So the the, or the league couldn't have picked a better matchup for these couple of games and for these division series and have these guys go at it for a spot in the in the championship series and just have these division rivals going at it is a good spot. It's definitely bringing views up. Yeah. It really is. I mean, because with the whole scrutiny at, like, the beginning of the year with uh, with contract negotiations and how they're going to carry this out, I mean, it's bringing viewership, and people want to see blood when it comes to baseball. I agree. I mean, the – the Oakland uh, Houston series it w went on. Like they were actually, those was actually bench clearing balls in that one. Oh, so, um, but the the one, I mean, we 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 mentioned it last week how they didn't reseed. I, I think that that baseball should have reseeded. I don't think they should have had this kind of system because it's basically like after the first round, like all the seeds just went out the window. You know, like whatever fifth seed, seventh seed, nine. You know the. So basically, be consistent with it. Uh, well, this is, like, unprecedented for the MLB, so I, I think maybe in the future they'll look at it a little bit differently. But, I mean, it, it has created these great matchups, but, you know, I think that they should have uh, reseeded. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I think if they if they continue this expanded playoff that they, that they tried this year, which I think was fantastic, the way that they en ended up setting that up. And I think that if that might be the case if we go back to actual having home field. I think at this point yeah. in time – I think the only advantage you get, obviously, is being able to bat last. Well, and that and the, well, uh, the dimensions of the field. Sure, abso yeah. well, absolutely, yeah. but everybody's playing on the same field, right? So, well, at least in their respective bubbles. So right. we'll see kind of where this plays out. It's not like one team has an advantage or the other. Um, but it, at that point, I think that in the future, if we go back to, yeah, we got our own stadiums and we're playing in our own hometowns, then, yeah, I think you need to reseed where the Yankees may have had the Rays – or the Rays won the, the division, so yeah. the Rays would have been a higher seed in this case, and, and the A's would have been a higher seed in their case. And frankly, I don't think Houston – well, Houston, let's face it, Houston skated by this year without having really any penalties yeah. um, because of all of this COVID nonsense and, and everything that's gone on. They've kind of just slid under the bubble and, and not been – no pun intended. But they uh, were able to sneak in with a losing record and, and be able to – they're right now – and. As we speak, they're up in the and could close the series out today. So, it, it's just a question of who gets hot at the right time when the playoffs come around, and that's how baseball's always been. But just a question of how kind of where things are going. We're we're in a good in a good spot for baseball. And it's pretty shocking that you've seen the Miami Marlins like they just took care of the Cubs. The Fighting Mattingly. Hey, the the Marlins out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. The Marlins are our World Series are bust. That team yeah. when they make. The, 
Every year they made the playoffs, they win. They yeah. win it. So that's a um, point. Who knows that what's going to happen? Year. And so, and I mean, if they if they're they got to win tonight. If the, uh, but I think that that Braves team. But just the biggest has question. Sorry, I'm going to stop you guys right here. So before we went on air, the Marlins lost, so they're actually out. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They, they got swept. Yeah. So then there we go. So the season's over for yeah, the Marlins the and fighting Mattingly's, Lee's, and they made history by losing a play a playoff they finally series. Finally lost finally. the playoff series. Yeah. That's right. So the. Uh, I mean, great showing for the the, the Miami Marlins. I, I, I guess. I mean, they were one of the teams in the beginning of the the season where they had a little bit of issues with up containing. Yeah, up and down. Well, yeah. they've always had issues up and down, but containing the virus, and they were, had to postpone games. Oh, yeah. And I don't think they got a whole sixty game schedule in, and they ended up winning, getting in on winning percentage, and and actually made some noise, like you said, by knocking out the Cubs, who a lot of people picked to go pretty far this year. Uh, with Chris Bryant, I believe he's a free agent at the end of the su- at the end of this season. So, uh, kudos to the Marlins for for even making it this far. That that Braves team is scary though. They're yeah, a good team. Yeah. Kyle Wright, yeah. you got uh, Acuna. That that team's a good team. A lot of people, Danby a lot Swanson. of people picking them to uh, to make it to the finals. But uh, what I was going to say before you brought that point up that it, that they got eliminated. Mm-hmm. So twice that they've won the World Series and they've made it far, they had. They had, like, this thing of, like, dismantling the team. Yeah. So what I was going to ask before you even said anything was, if they would have won the World Series, would they have dismantled their team? Like, when Talking they were... the Marlins? Yeah. Because under uh, Jeffrey Loria, they, they were like, okay, we had Outlider, yeah. we had this guy, we had that guy. Sure. Okay, let's dismantle, and then you don't see them in the playoffs for a while. Yeah, that seems to be the Heisinga method, right? Yeah. And, they, and they've kind of continued that after he passed away. And uh, even with the – you can go back as far with the Dolphins too. I mean, the Dolphins had that 72 run, and then that, that team was pretty much torn apart. So the, the Marlins did the same thing in 96 and in 2006. So, so uh, 97. 97. That's 97. Right. 2003. 2003. Oh yeah, that's right. Who did they beat in two thousand seven in the in the World Series? I don't remember. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Or in ninety seven. Ninety seven, so. uh, they, they beat the Indians. The, the ninety seven, yeah. they beat the Indians. Right. Uh, the yeah. two thousand three, they beat the Yankees. I knew that. Mm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 And they beat the Cubs <laughs> on. I gotta route. throw those shots uh-huh. in. So. <laughs> God damn. So, uh, <laughs> oh, he's uh, uh, so Wesley doesn't know this. We actually uh, Wesley and Harris just met. So Harris is actually a uh, Boston fan. So yeah. he's yeah. all the way around. Yeah, oh. got the so nice shirt here. So this is a oh. great oh. Uh, folks. Title Town. We got oil and water here. Uh, so it's a very it's nice a city. Show, yeah. It's a very nice city. It's I do like going show. to uh, Kowloon now out, out in Saugus. Hey, great many Chinese a fun restaurant. night town, Kowloon. <laughs> great Chinese restaurant. Shout outs to the owner, uh, <laughs> Andy Wong, if he sees us. He will now. He sent him a link. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, just to recap. So, the Dodgers are up to – so, actually, tonight, throughout the course of the day, there could – all four series could actually end today. So – Or they could extend. Hopefully, they extend. So, it's – right now, it's hopefully. end or extend. We'll get to that in a second. So, uh, so the Dodgers and Padres, uh, they're facing off against each other uh, two zips. So, they'll play tonight at, like, uh, 9 o'clock Eastern. And then uh, the aforementioned Marlins lost to the first seeded Atlanta Braves, so the Braves are moving on. Uh, the the first uh, the first game of the NLCS will be Monday. And in the East, the AL East matchup, we have the first seeded Rays with a two one series lead against the New York Yankees. Thoughts? Well, my thoughts is one: the Rays are a tough team. Everybody knew. I mean, they came out of nowhere. Two, I don't respect them. <laughs> After <laughs> Kevin Cash like just came out deliberately yeah. and said, and I quote, I'm basically going to throw at the Yankees any chance I have, and I'm going to get away with it, and I've been doing it for the past few years. I've been doing it to other teams, but I did it more towards the Yankees. And number three, the umping is like very inconsistent. If you're a baseball fan, forget about what fan you are. If you're a baseball fan and you see balls that are being called strikes and strikes that are being called, I mean, being called balls, forget about it. You're going to be pissed off. That that game two was just awful. Like the Yankees ended up winning game one, and then game two, uh, they put in uh, 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 the 21-year-old starter, uh, Garcia, 
and then he ended up with pitching for one inning, and then they brought in Hap for the rest of the game. Which was stupid. Absolutely, it was just awful. Yeah, Aaron so. Boone's just out over-managing yeah, the series. Yeah. And it, He's been he's that's been his mo since he became the manager out there. And well, I just think this whole season, like like it was the, the opening game, he yeah. like pulled somebody after like the third inning or something. And like that was just weird. You and know? to go to touch on your point with the umping, it, it's frustrating for sure because I mean everybody watches a game and the the wherever you wherever you watch, whether it's Fox, ESPN, they always have those good uh, the good strike zones for you and you can oh, see yeah. everything. They actually did an analysis on the ump last night. Ninety four percent of his balls and strikes calls were right. So. It's tough to see as a Yankee fan to to ha- when you can see it, but when they actually do the analysis for it to be that close, it's well, a little, they rotate it's the guys. So like right. the umpire yeah. for game right. two we'll would probably guys. listen as long as it's yeah. not Angel. Is it Angel Jimenez, the guy? Angel that, Hernandez. Hernandez. I mean, he's the worst that I've ever seen. So, but if you if you go on the MLB site, right? Yeah. No matter what game it is, and you put, let's say, for example, the Dodgers and and Padres, right? You can actually live track the strike zone. Right. So what I was going off is not his rating, what they rated him, but more of the live tracker that the MLB is putting out in their website. Yeah, yeah but yeah. The, 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 guy, it's a cool tool. the guy from yeah. last night who was probably 94% right yeah. is different from the guy who yeah, was in right. game two. The guy, the guy from game two, I CB Buckner. Well, listen, yeah, there's always going to be – until we get umps from out from behind home plate and we get a camera in there, with yeah. however we're going to do it, yeah. it you're going to have inconsistency, right? I so mean, like – You've got to roll with it. The Rays had, what, four home runs last night? So you yeah. can't give up four home runs and expect to win the ball game. But also, too, I mean, calls can lead to, like, moments like that. Like, for example, the strike him out, throw him out play sure. that uh, Tanaka had with Higgy, they called that a ball – and a stolen base. Like, right. he just, he was safe when he right. was not. It was strike him out, throw him out. Baseball 101, if you can't, like, really tell that was a strike him out, throw him out, you shouldn't be doing your job. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and the, the le- I think the, the moral of the story here is that if you know an umpire's name, he's not good. <laughs> they, <they're> just, they, <laughs> that's, there's that's there's, there's no other true. way around it. You know, there, there's, how, there's hundreds of umpires, but if you actually know what their names are, they're they not suck. good. Nope. <laughs> and uh, unless you're a family member, though, and that's the only <laughs> that's the only exception there. So you know, win or lose, um, you know, like whether there's excuses or not, the Yankees have to win tonight they to extend to. the series to tomorrow. If not, then they go home, and the uh, Tampa Bay moves on in another playoff series in another sport. <laughs> hmm. And um, to wrap it up, the AL West, we have uh, number one Oakland versus number two Houston. Houston won the first two games of the series before Oakland won last night. So. And they're actually going – they're on right now. And get a quick score update. It's 5-4 to four Houston. So, they're still in. Let's see what we're going on. Any, any thoughts on that series? I just want Houston to lose. Everybody wants yeah. Houston to lose. Yeah, I think that everybody's kind of rooting – I think that's where everybody can kind of agree at this point, unless you're from Houston. and you, Yeah. And the, the Astros kind of have slid by, but – and under, like I said before, they slid under the radar, right? So, nah, nah, that might have been a different day. So, yeah, it's top yeah. of the fifth, two outs, five four Houston in the lead right now. Yeah, yeah. Dodger Stadium. Yeah, so plenty of game left for the A's to come back, and and I mean the A's have always been that. I mean ever since Moneyball came out, it's when they really came to that forefront of that underdog story so i'd love to well, see they, the a's come back and beat them and yeah they always they, def- they brought a nuisance i mean a nuisance when it comes to decisions <laughs> and true. that is analytics yep. yeah nerds are ruining the game <laughs> like let's i think i think aaron boone saw that movie and he's just taking off with it too well I'm that's sure. what's happening to every team in the league the whole thing is based off analytics. They, they, they were saying that there was actually uh, just to jump back to the Yankees because that's that's who we follow the most. So they said that they mentioned it on the telecast that J.A. Happ like is awful in the first inning. So like, is that why you put one pitcher in the first inning and then like gave him the second inning as if? But it it's would still J.A. Happ's first that's inning. So yeah, what so are we doing? I, I don't know. I hope that wasn't the case because and, and you awful. really you really think that. The Yankees are playing analytical baseball and not playing with their wallet. Come on. The, the, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the teams that have big bankrolls, 
play with their wallet. They don't they're, play they're, with, they're the playing with No, no, they're definitely yeah. playing with analytics. Anytime you see a boneheaded move, okay, let's put this guy over here because he bats a 160 against this guy but has a whip of this and an and extra base hit average of that. See, and but I think a, you see more of that. For the teams that don't pay pitchers three hundred million dollars, you know what I mean. If you no, can afford to pay a guy that much money, you're starting to see it you, with the right? Yankees as well. You're starting to see it with the teams. Well, I think that that's how Higgy problems. got in the game last night. I yeah, think, and for those reasons, so yeah, I completely agree. But I think that for the teams like the A's, I mean, you could argue maybe the Cubs, but probably not anymore. They're kind of getting on that heavy spending yeah. on that heavy spending, and also the Marlins are another team that probably use those analytics to heart. And I mean, great. I mean, Don Mattingly is a, a Hall of Famer. But, oh yeah. So, but it, you don't really see any more like gut moves. You know what I right. mean? You don't see any more like Tommy Lasorda type of moves. Yeah. Like, hmm. like you, no, you don't. Yeah, see we're gonna that go anymore. with the lefty now. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Man, you got to do the 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 whole stupid rule of like this guy got to face three batters now. Like if he gets shelled in the first pitch, why do I want? Two more batters. Yeah. Well, I, that, that's a league rule. It's, I, I'm sure the managers yeah. didn't really. Yeah, I know. I was much. just bringing up that they've they're ruining the game right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, out of all the out of all the gimmicks that have transpired this year with like the runner on second and the start of the extra innings and the seven inning double headers, which is my absolute worst. Like I, I hate it's, that so much. It's all about like appeasing so. the social media yeah. yuppies. But now, I mean. The one thing that has worked is this 18 playoff, and I hope I hope out of everything I hope they throw out all that other crap and then keep the eight, the eight teams, you know, because you know it's, it's the only sport we got 30 teams, you know, you might as well, you know, throw eight eight. Yeah, eight you teams might as well. There, yeah. I mean, the more teams you have, you should kind of bump up the playoff format a bit. Yeah, fo- football has football would be the least at that point with six, but I don't, you know, the whole one game to play in the series, you know, I don't, it, it's. It's exciting baseball, but I don't. I don't think it's it's true. I think it's you know you get, you you do you do the three game series and then you do well in one ballpark with a home ballpark to get the advantage. You know, eventually when the fans come, and then you know you keep on going with the series. I, I like you know it brings more fan bases into the playoffs. And, oh yeah. You know you get more T-shirts, like more uh, more postseason T-shirts out there. Eight different fan bases instead of six. Or let five. let the kids play. Let them uh, freaking bat flip. Enough with these unwritten rules crap, like, and get rid of the wave. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's going to be, that, uh, we're not prepared for that today. That's going to be a whole nother show where we talk about the wave. Because we, we've argued, actually, you know, let's talk about it right now. So the wave, <laughs> I love the wave. I, I think that uh, for, for people at home who don't know what the wave is, that's, you know, it's sporadically when a bunch of fans get together and they all stand up and they go like this and they sit back down. I love it. I don't. I think it's it's the stupidest thing that I've ever seen. Even when I'm in visiting ballparks, when the wave comes around, I get up because I just love the wave that much. I don't care what I'm wearing. I don't care. I just, anytime a wave's coming up, boom, I'm, in, I'm up. I, I cut off the wave. <laughs> Man, you, you know, it depends on where it starts for me because if it starts like two sections over and I got to stand up 17 times for it to get going, I'm out. <laughs> but if it's coming around once, all right, I'll stand up and have some fun. But I mean, if it's starting right next to me and I gotta stand up six times, you're gonna get me once or twice, and then I'll just throw my hands up and just say, "All right, you're good. Let's stop." <laughs> now you're just gonna get me zero. <laughs> I'm gonna do the roll call before every first inning, at yeah. the beginning of every game, like I always do. Section two hundred three, Bleacher Creatures, and I'm not gonna do the wave. Yeah. You wanna do the wave? Take the seven down to uh, Grand Central. And uh, actually, no, take the four down to Grand Central, transfer to the seven, and get off at City Field. I love the wave. <laughs> I don't. No, what, what, what we don't see anymore really is those beach balls. I think that's uh, – they used to be like beach balls yeah, randomly the stadium, going the around everywhere. kind of cut too. back on that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they cut quick. that off. I love that too, but, you know, it's, it's not there anymore. Yeah. So, all right, so we're going to get into the NHL. So the um, NHL draft happened earlier this week, and – the New York Rangers were very busy as as a uh, franchise. They had yep. the number one pick, and they picked uh, Alexis Lafreniere. Lafreniere, shocker La- there. Lafreniere. You can say Lafreniere. I think Lafreniere. that was the most consensus number one pick since oh, Connor yeah. McDavid. Yeah. 
great pick for the Rangers. Obviously, it's a franchise leading player. Let's go back to the draft lottery before this draft even happened. Mm -hmm. How the Rangers lucked into this pick is beyond me, where you have all those teams that didn't even make it into the bubble, into the play-in rounds, and then the Rangers get to luck out and win this pick. I mean, great for the organization. This kid's going to be a stud here in New York. And, I mean, it's good for the NHL to have him have a big name here like that and come out. The comes from the same franchise that Sidney Crosby played for, made a name for himself there in Ramuski up in the Quebec Major Junior League. But You want to know something? This is like, for to add on to what you're saying, big point here, you don't see many – top draft picks that come from the province of Quebec. Yeah, I think it's this like was, one is, a once in a blue. That. I think this was the first time uh, in since a couple years. Since Mario yeah. Lemieux. Was it since Lemieux? I don't remember since the Lemieux. name. Yeah. Since Lemieux that wow. uh, you Somebody have a, from Quebec. a generational talent that's going to be a generational talent that's from Quebec. Yeah. You have not seen that in a while. Right. Which so, is why I'm shocked that Montreal didn't end up with the pick. Yeah, right? I'm shocked that Montreal yeah. didn't end up with the pick. I mean, we can speculate as to the conspiracy theories and everything like that. But like I said, just to, to hit my point home, this kid's going to be a stud in New York playing. Oh, yeah. Hopefully he plays with Panarin to watch the two of them work together. I think they actually play the same position, so I don't think that's going to happen. But nonetheless, you might see them on the power play together. They're, gonna, they're both going to do some beautiful magic together. And, and, and hopefully, I mean, I don't want to see it, but – I know the city of New York's been itching for a championship now for about 16 years and, and would love to see a championship brought back here. But they, uh, he, he's definitely a piece to help that. But they definitely need some help in some other spots. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so to, to piggyback on your point, actually, I wrote an article saying that the, that the NHL, they protected the teams that were supposed to be in the playoffs. Uh, going from a 16-team format to a 2014 format to protect them from the – what if scenarios that could have happened with the 10, 12 games that were lost in the season, but then they didn't protect the seven teams that didn't even have a chance to tank, which is mostly why lotteries happen. But you know, the 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 first pick went to a one of the playoff teams, quote unquote, yeah. the, the the qualifying losers of the first round, and um, out of those eight teams, the Rangers won. Yeah, I mean, imagine being Detroit and finishing dead last the last two years, and I think they got the sixth or seventh pick this year. It was and the I seventh. Think, pick. Yep, and I think they had the fifth pick last year. And not so being not being finishing at the bottom of the league and not being able to get the first pick in the last two years, first two picks or top three picks even in the last two years is wild. That just seems the way it, it, it always seems to go that way. Like everybody who finishes dead last ends up not getting. It's uh, the COVID factor. The, num the one, number one pick. Nah, just, that, that's just lottery. It's, so. it's the COVID factor. Yeah. I mean, if COVID didn't happen, I kid you not, Lafreniere would have went to the Red Wings. Yeah. I oh, kid you not. Yeah, I kid you not. Say. Well, the, the, the whole lotteries would have been different. It wouldn't have been – I don't think it would have been exactly the same way. It's just it's, – because, like, the, the team – that was slotted to win was the 13th pick, uh, the thir like the 13th worst uh, the, um, slot. And then there's only like 14, 15 slots. So like you're saying that like one of the mid-level people won the draft, like that never happens in any draft. Right. So well, like it, it was just weird. It was just the way that it was looking. Yeah. I mean, I see a lot of uh, draft nerds on Facebook, yeah. uh, not Facebook, YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of interesting stuff. Anyways, there was people that talk about prospects and draft and all that stuff, and they all kept saying that, mind you, these are people that dedicate their lives to that, that they were saying Lafreniere would have most likely been in a Red Wings uniform had this COVID stuff not happened. They, they, he had, they, they had the biggest chance to do it, but yeah. it, just, it, it still would have been Yeah, I mean, the it was same the same thing with, Nixon, with yeah. the Knicks and Zion, right? So he, they, <laughs> yeah. would have had the most, they would have had the most ping-pong balls in the machine, but who knows yeah. what would have happened. Yeah. I honestly believe that if the season would have continued, Montreal would have missed the playoffs, been in that lottery, yeah. and he would have actually been in Montreal like the world had intended. But, <laughs> which, thank God he didn't, because I can't stand Montreal and do not want to see them succeed every one bit of the other. So. That's a fair point. Yeah. And we have a we have a former part of the Bruins that is our general manager in Jeff Gordon. Right. He did help, you know, build that Stanley Cup team back in twenty eleven. That's true. And, and and but here's the question. 
I know that the Rangers are nice and cozy now in the back end, and but we hate to see Lundqvist go from the city. He was the, the king, right? The so-called self-proclaimed well, king. I, in the would, I wouldn't call him the king because well, everyone he, else does. They, well, they call him the king, but they don't even realize why he's called the king. Sure. So there's I, that. And but this brings into my point: where does he go? And do the Rangers see him down the road, possibly in the playoffs, for a chance for him to get his cup that he didn't win here? It's all signs, rumors, all signs are pointing to Washington. Yeah. Maybe because he wants to stay, like, close to, like, the tri-state area. What is it, like a like an hour train ride from D.C. to over here? Uh, three hours. Yeah. Three hours. Mm-hmm. Okay, a three-hour I commute. think it's because he has the best chance to win there. For teams that need a yeah, goal but, that are yeah. ready to win now. Right? Yeah, but so. he spent, like, 15 years, you know, a Swedish guy not knowing a lick of English to begin with. Sure. And, you know, he spends his career here, goes into GQ magazines, gets all. Yeah, you but if he, wanted, if he really wanted to stay, do you think he could have gone to a team like New Jersey? I don't think he would have wanted to do that. Right, he wants to win. So I, I It's, it's not even that. Close, it, it's more. So the reason why he wouldn't go to, like, Jersey. Let's go back to when John Tavares was a free agent. Would he have went to Manhattan? No, nah, pretty sure he didn't even pick up the phone when they called. There you go. <laughs> but, um, yeah. no, nah, but, like, all right, so the Lundquist situation, yes, he wants to win. Um, there was a lot of talk that he wanted to stay on the East Coast. Uh, I think in Washington as opposed to Tampa Bay, which is almost the same situation, would be, like, he get, like, a 40-60 split in playing time maybe in Washington. And then, but if he went to Tampa and you have a fully, um, a fully healthy uh, – Vasilevsky. Vasilevsky. So if that's going to be like 25%. Yeah, if he went to Tampa, he's going to play 15, yeah, 15 games. He's games. riding the bench. Yeah. Vasilevsky can play. Yeah. Vasilevsky, I believe, two years ago when they got knocked out by Columbus, I think he played 72 games or something yeah, like something that. Something like so, that. Yeah. I, like an old Lundquist. Lundquist used to play 70 right. games on a regular, you know? So. Yeah, but that's what also kind of like burnt him out. Because right. remember, John Tortorella like, had him play like what? 78 games? Yeah. Barely any rest? Yeah. Yep. So – uh, yeah, so it looks like Washington, uh, the free agency opens up tomorrow, so we'll, we'll get a quick answer to uh, yeah. where he ends up going. I'll um, be watching TSN tomorrow. And, and the one thing is uh, the the one Lundquist factor that a lot of people are missing is that it's not about the money. I'm sure he's gonna he's probably going to get like a million five somewhere. He's not going to worry about anything. He's just no. going to go to whatever team um, has the best chance to win. So it looks like Washington right now is where all the signs are pointing, but we'll see. Actually, like I wrote an article, and uh, I had like – 10 teams where he can go and Washington wasn't on it. So that, that's what I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for him not to go there just because of that. But, uh, you know, if he ends up going there, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll be good for him. I mean, but if you think about it, Washington is not really much of a rivalry towards us. What? Yeah, no, they're we, – no, we, we faced off – The Rangers them. have seen them in the playoffs over yeah, and over but, again. Over like, yeah, but it's it, like it, 12 times. No, yeah. But if you really break it in up – In like, division too. If you break it up, right, if you break it up like this, we beat them three out of two. So we only had five playoff – matches within the last decade with them. Yeah, but you're also Seriously, you're battling that's for division what titles with them, too. Yeah, You know, but, you play them more times than any other team outside of the division. I think that most Ranger fans would like to see him Well, let me ask you a question. Right? You're a Bruins fan, right. right? Do you see the Buffalo Sabres as a, like, a clear it's rival? A, no. Well, it depends because the, the Sabres really have been on the bottom of the, the league for the last – 10 years or but so. But you guys so, have had some playoff series with them back sure, in the Rob, Sure, the Rob Ray series back in – or May Day back in the day, those <laughs> series. But those are from before we were even born. So, <laughs> hey, listen – But that's my whole point. Right, but do I consider – but we don't see Toronto all that often. I consider Toronto a massive rivalry. Yeah, we don't but, see Montreal all that. That's a historic rivalry. But you guys – Clash when you guys face each other. Yeah, that's I think, the thing. But I think it's just simply because the Rangers don't have anybody to square up with Tom Wilson is the fact that is why you don't see that physical. No, game well, they come they, out, they I have the Bren, the uh, Brendan Lemieux to do that. But what I'm trying to say is most times than not, you don't really see like clashes as if like a Rangers devil. You don't see the Rangers physical fly. part. Is yeah, what that's I what I'm you. trying to say. All right, physicality so. makes rivals. Sure. I I mean I'm going to disagree. Well. I can see your point only because the Rangers rival, like, on the totem pole of hatred, you have the Devils and Islanders, like, depending on where you live. Like, if you're, up if there you're a Ranger too. fan who lives in Jersey, you hate see, the I Devils would, more. I, I would think that the, the Capitals are a bigger, bigger rivalry for the Rangers than Pittsburgh is. I think people just hate Pittsburgh more because Crosby's there. 
No, it's actually it's it's a lot of like Pittsburgh deep a little bit more, yeah, because they had like yeah. the, they had that success. Like Washington, by the time Washington ended up being at the pinnacle where they actually won, it was like we were kind of like all rooting for Ovi and things like that. Right. It was like a heartwarming well, we were, story. Like, we but when the Pitts, when the Pittsburgh way. was good, it was like nobody wanted them to win, like for no reason. You know, like well, let's face it, Pittsburgh's yeah. never been bad. I think they missed the playoffs in the last couple. On purpose. Right. So I think that injuries and stuff have inhibited. I mean, as long as Crosby and Malkin are both playing there, I think that that's a good team. I mean, if you go back to, like, 91, 92, like. Well, yeah. they're untouchable when you talk about that, when you talk about that, pro- that program. Well, a lot of the, so. <laughs> the – who was in the way for the Pittsburgh Penguins? Right. The Rangers. The Rangers kept getting demolished by that 91, 92 Pens yeah. team. So that's why I'm saying, like, if you're a Rangers fan, you would hate the Penguins more because of that history – and then it stems up into modern day. Yeah. yeah. So so you basically go Devils, Islanders, interchange, depending on where you live. Then you have the Flyers, who everybody just hates for whatever reason. And then Pittsburgh, and then the Capitals would be under that. But at the yeah. same time, you know, like, the, there's been so many battles recently between the Capitals and the Rangers. Um, it's only like five battles. I think it's also proximity to here, right? So you yeah. have obviously the biggest rivalries are going to be the Devils and the Islanders. Be- simply because, I mean, they take the bus or take the train over to the, the other side of the, of the river, and that's where they play, right? So yeah. I think that proximity is definitely key. I think, obviously, if you want to talk history, Flyers, Rangers is obviously a big one. Oh, yeah. Right, so Very we get into that. Blood. I think it's – honestly, it's the division, right? So anybody outside of maybe Carolina – is probably a big rival for the Blue Jackets, you know. right? Columbus. Blue Jackets are like the lovable losers. Right. Nobody really. So yeah, I think Columbus. Yeah, and I, and Columbus is a team that's on the rise. So we'll see what happens with them. Oh yeah. So, uh, so, so we'll get back to it. So we'll just breeze through. So the Rangers had two picks in the first round. They ended up trading for a defenseman um, at the 19th pick, Brandon Schneider, Brandon who's like Schneider. a big guy. Yeah. So Brandon Schneider, very physical so, guy. And uh, what I think was the biggest score of the draft for the Rangers were, was. They ended up trading former 2017 seventh round pick, Leas Anderson. They actually got something for him. Finally, right? Yeah, they got, they got a second round pick, a uh, late second round. They're number 60 overall, so he's going to be playing for the Los Angeles Kings. If he comes. Duck. Well, now he's going to be closer to his dad now because I have actually did my research, and his dad is a scout for the LA Kings. Huh. There you go. Yeah. So, so maybe he'll, you know, have like that uh, – that guidance, so to speak, big city, because L.A. is a big market, too, is no different than New York. Just New York is just more brutal with the fans and the media. I, I think a lot of, a, a lot of players' success, uh, no matter the talent level, is situational. So if he's going to be better off over there, then, you know, God bless him. But he definitely wasn't made f- for the New York Rangers the way they're presently constructed right now. Well, that was yeah. a Gordy Clark failure, for, right? Yeah, there. for a seventh rounder, you know, he was supposed to be like the next Patrice Bergeron, and that was a uh, epic yeah. He was failure. supposed to be that diamond in the rough player yeah, that really never manifested you know? itself. And I think that I think the Rangers came out ahead on that draft. The one thing that I didn't really understand, and I mentioned this to you a couple of days ago at, at the same day, was I didn't understand the the reason to trade up to get Braden Schneider. I thought that he would have been around at 22. I'll tell you what it is. So, basically, the Devils were looking for a defenseman. Right. So, it was basically what, like one of those, ha-ha, I'm going to be petty, and here's my middle finger to your face, and I took what you wanted yep. type so, of move. So, uh, so the, the, we were actually going to get to that. So, the Devils had the seventh pick, the 18th, and the 20th overall. So, the Rangers jumped into that sandwich and then picked the uh, yeah. – Brandon Schneider, so we'll see how that ends up working out. Should be fun for the rivalry. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's got a couple more years of junior, and then he'll be up in maybe two or three years yeah, for them. Yeah, yeah. This is this is. I don't see him coming right. up and making an immediate uh-huh. impact, but I think that over the the course, as long as he continues to develop over with the Wheat Kings, I think he's going to be. I mean, if he player. does, then bless him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he could end up finishing as long as the OHL kicks off and they continue in a safe kind of continuation that they're moving through. So yeah. we'll see. I think that they I think eventually he'll be a good defensive for the Rangers. Better than what they just got rid of, that's for sure. Absolutely. So the Devils uh with the seventh pick they picked Alexander Holtz. And then with the eighteenth pick they they picked Dawson Mercer. And with the twentieth pick they picked Shakur Makamadulin. Mukamadulin. 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 Yeah. Actually like when I wrote the name I wrote it like in the syllables <laughs> to try to knock it down but I heard yeah, that one, that one was a wild one. I, yeah. I, that, 
he wasn't on anybody's real draft boards, I don't think. I think he wasn't inside the top 50 for a lot of people. And uh, that was a big stretch for the Devils. And I, I, we'll see. I don't know much about him. That kid, Dawson Mercer, though, is going to be a stud. Yeah, he looks like he's going to be a stud. I mean, not for nothing, this draft is like the second most stacked draft behind yeah. the draft that uh, Connor McDavid was in, yep. which was 2015, say, yep. right? I'll tell you the score of this draft is going to be Washington getting Hendrix Lapierre. As long as he can stay healthy, I know he had some neck and head issues uh, last year, which took I think he only played 12 games last year. But, I mean, that kid is really good, and he fell in the draft to Washington. And I bet you, I mean, Butcher Gras said it on Twitter, actually, and I think it's going to manifest itself. When Ovechkin breaks Gretzky's record, Lapierre is going to get that assist. I guarantee it. I'll call oh, that right wow. now. Oh, big shot caller. What's the what's the numbers to the Power Bowl? <laughs> but um, surprising because a lot of signs were like pointing Lapierre to Montreal, but because of the whole COVID factor. Team doctors really couldn't uh, interview him, so to speak, and they couldn't do a combine and right. all that jazz. So Washington got a diamond in the rough. Well, I'd say um, I, I think the what's going to be the end, the sleeper of the draft in the early draft is going to be uh, Marco Rosi going to the Wild at number nine. I, I didn't think he was going to get past the two Ottawa picks at three and five. I thought he was going to fall into like like maybe like between fifteen and nineteen. Oh, okay. So you 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 think they got him earlier? I thought he. Yeah. I thought he would be like I think he's going to be a great player, but it's just it. Can Minnesota develop him? Because yeah. I mean, we've seen we've seen Minnesota, and we can. I think with Billy Garen now at the helm, completely, I think that they'll be better off as an organization now. But I think that I mean, you look at their track record drafting players, and they just haven't developed, or they sit in in the AHL, or they sit in juniors until their entry level deals are out. Oh, or when it. their negotiating rates are out, and then they end up going signing somewhere else. So, and then they become studs. And you just see that with Minnesota over and over again. And the state of hockey could really use a winner. I mean, oh, yeah. They really could, and, and, and those fans deserve one up there. they got to survive the cold like nobody's I mean, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it's like it's kind of bad being a, a Minnesota fan. Yeah. Like, I mean, you got, I mean, those the teams. The Timberwolves are not doing anything. And they, I mean, they root for their local high school hockey programs more than they root yeah. for the NHL teams up there. And it's, I, it's fun to which see. They it. have entertaining, oh, uh, yeah. entertaining the teams to watch. They actually televised them on NBCSN. Yep. Uh, you can't even be a Twins fan because they blew, like, what, 18 postseason yeah, losses they, already? Yeah. The Vikings can't get anywhere, and it's like your only hope is yeah. Minnesota high school hockey. They can use some nice, warm championship feels. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe if they rebrand to uh, the Minnesota North Stars, what would happen? You ever think about that? Uh, well, some, they need something. So the, uh, so the Devils actually, uh, we were talking about it last week, uh, who they could buy out, and they actually bought out Corey Schneider. So right now they have $30 million in cap space. That's a lot of money to play yeah, with. Yeah, mm-hmm. Devils, a lot of money to play with. Devils, they have basically with the young players that they have, they can, they have like a blank canvas to yeah. shape this team whatever way they want. Yeah, I think they had a good draft, and I think it, in free agency they need to make a good splash, right? Oh, yeah. And I think that there's a lot of a lot of RFAs. I think this is definitely going to be a year of uh, offer sheets. We saw one last year with Sebastian Ajo. I think we're going to see a couple more this summer or this fall, I should say. This we, free agency might, period, we might but, see one with Matt Barzell. Oh, I believe so for sure, and – I think that there's a couple teams that could be in the mix for Matt Barzell. And I think as far as to touch back on the Devils, I think the Devils have a ton of cap space. you got to fix the goaltending situation up there. Yeah. I mean, we don't know. Right now they don't have one. Right. Have, uh, uh, you have Blackwood. Reg- you have Blackwood, on, um, that's right. So Restricted free agent. And not so signed. I, there's plenty of free agent goalies out there for them to choose from. If they, su- if, they do cho- if they do choose to go that route, there are plenty of viable options for them. And this is definitely one of those years to do it. You might be able to get someone pretty cheap. So who uh, who do you have on your free agent uh, goaltenders list? Uh, there's a ton of free agents this year. I mean, you got Mark Markstrom coming out of Vancouver. I think he's going to get re-signed, though. I think that Vancouver. I think Take he had Vancouver? a coming out. Yeah, I think he had a coming out party. Unless someone's willing to throw the the Brinks truck at him, I don't think he's going to go anywhere. I think that he likes being in Vancouver. He's he came over in that Luongo trade way back when. I don't know if you remember when he came yeah. back to Florida. Um, they love him. He had a great playoffs, and they just kind of fell short against Vegas. Braden Holtby we talked about. I think Braden Holtby is actually going to end up in Colorado, if I had to guess where Atlanta is so, for him. So a reunion between him and Grubauer? Yeah, I think so. I, I, and I don't know. 
I think Grubauer kind of got hurt. We didn't quite see him in the playoffs. and He did. And I, I just don't think Colorado can think he's going to be able to get it done. And that team's ready to win now. They have to win now with some of the contract situations they've got coming. you got Thomas Grice, Anton Kudobin, which are two guys that were actually backups for most of the year. Oh, yeah. Um, Kudobin obviously had his – he was a backup for the Bruins when they went to the cup finals. And uh, they had – against Chicago in 2013. And they um, – they have a, a ton of upside to them, but are they going to be the reliable guy, right? Can Thomas Grice play 55, 60 games and be able to win all of the time? I'm not saying every night, but can he be the guy to be leaned on because well, he was a, really he, took over for him? He was really a career backup. Right. Like, I remember him from, like, starting with the Sharks. Yeah. Like, he was a career backup. Right. And, and Kudobin was pretty much the same way, right? Yeah. And, and Kudobin obviously came out and stood on his head for Dallas. But, so we kind of have to more see more than Ben Bishop did. I, yeah. I, I think what we're going to see, especially uh, in the next, well, it's the past couple of years, it's, we've, been, we've been leaning toward that. The same way the NFL doesn't really have like your main running back who like gets 30, 35 touches a game. Like yeah. they, they do like a committee with the first and second running back. Yep. I think uh, a lot that's going to happen a lot with the goaltending. You, right. You're seeing it with, with some teams where they're more dividing and they're trying to have like a one and a one A or yeah. like two, you know, basically one A's like carry the team. Sure. And um, I think that uh, moving forward, and especially in this season where it's going to be like a little more condensed, I think we're going to see like a lot of back-to-backs. And I think yeah. having deep goaltending is going to be very, very pivotal for this upcoming season, which starts uh, January 1st. They announced this this okay. week. He's going anywhere? I, to be honest, I – Maybe a Penguins reunion. Nah, I don't. I, I don't hate that. I. I, I mean to to guide Trish and Jerry. Yeah, I think. I think if he goes to Pittsburgh, he's going to be a backup. I think yeah. that he they they the Penguins extended Jari, gave him a three year deal and gave him a bunch of money. I think his days are numbered in Vegas. I think when they hired um, when they got rid of Gallant and they hired DeBoer, I think that DeBoer doesn't have an attachment to him, and mm-hmm. I think that. Um, he's he's kind of on his way out. Does he kind of stick around one more year, maybe, and and do the Seattle thing? Do does he want to go through that again, or do we do we kind of see him taking it because he's got a no trade clause, so he's kind of got a no fly list. So teams will definitely be in the market for him, but are mm-hmm. they on that list? Who knows? I don't know. I think I think he wants he's he's come out and said that he wants to be there. If he wants to be there, he wants to split time. Was he? He's like thirty eight years old too, right? Something yeah, like that. yeah. So, I mean, the guy still yeah. plays amazing. There's yeah. no doubt. So, so if they, if they, yeah, they he's rare. the face of that. Fr- I mean, in, in in reality, he's the face of that yeah. franchise in Vegas, and um, he was obviously the first guy that when they when they did their draft and and really has grown in that organization and made that organization where they are. I think that if he wants to be there and split time with Robin Leonard or play the backup role for a year, he might. And I think that he could end up in Seattle if that's what he cho- chooses to do, or if maybe someone wants to sign him and. They're on that no-fly list. Maybe he considers it. I know that there's a couple teams that are desperate need of goalies. It's just going to be kind of where does he not want to go? Yeah, it's going to be the musical chairs going on yep. with the goaltending. But, um, yeah, I'd have to say, you know, like goaltending is going to be at a premium. So I think that he'll just stay. I think that'll be the way yeah. it is. As long as they can afford to put the money up for, right. for the two goaltenders, yeah. which is, well, we'll see how far that lasts. So. I mean, like with Matt Murray going into Ottawa, yikes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I yeah, think that yeah. Ottawa's a gr- I think Ottawa's building something out there. And I think Ottawa's we talked yeah. about they offer sheets. They might be a sleeper. Sheets. They might be a we sleeper. We talked about offer sheets. Matt Barzell, especially. I would not be surprised to see Ottawa throw an offer sheet at Matt Barzell. With the Islanders cap situation and not buying anybody out, not getting rid of any of those contracts and putting guys on waivers, they're, they're in big trouble. So you, you think they're just going to be like, all right, buy Barzell. It's time to bring up Olivier Wallstrom. No, I don't think that's exactly what they're going to do. They want to hang on to him. They may match an offer sheet, but they're they're going to be in cap trouble. I mean, you got yeah. guys you got to pay to, down there and on the island, and I think that Matt Barzell is definitely a, the biggest candidate to get an offer sheet. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rangers throw one at him. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ottawa throw one at him. But they're, 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 they're going to do what uh, what Montreal did with uh, Sebastian Ajo right. from uh-huh. the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. They're going to take their shot. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. to see Montreal throw one at him too. I think that Matt Barzell is one of those guys that deserves every bit of money he gets. We saw it in the, in oh, the yeah. playoffs and what he did. And I think that 
what they're doing in Ottawa. They took Stutzel at the, that second pick or third pick this year. Second pick. Yep. Oh, no, and, third, third. Yep, they took him with that third pick this year. And I think with him, you got Brady Kachuk already there, Thomas Shabbat. I think they got a good team. Now you add Matt Murray to the mix. I think that's a good team. They're it's building, a good, core they're building right a good core. Exactly. And you got a couple young all-stars that are going to be able to – you add Barzell into the mix there, I think you're in good shape. Uh, you were going to say something, Liz? Well, what I was going to say is that um, – so I actually looked it up about, like, the penalties of the offer sheet. It all depends based on the amount of money and the amount of years yeah. that is signed for. Yeah, I mean, realistically, for Matt, for a guy like Matt Barzell, if you're going to offer sheet him, it's probably going to you're looking at getting rid of four first round picks. Yeah. So in, in that, in that I mean, the Rangers have them, and Ottawa has them. I don't know if Montreal does off the top of my head. I can't remember, but I know that, I, in my opinion, a guy like Matt Barzell doesn't come around very often. I think no. that it, unless the Islanders somehow find a way to throw the bank at him, I think he's, he's an offer sheet, or at least the Islanders match whatever offer that he gets. But I think uh-huh. that. I think that Ottawa wouldn't mind giving up their first-round picks. They've done it in the past, um, giving up first-round picks, not necessarily offer shooting guys, but yeah. they've given up first-round picks for a lot less than Matt Barzell, that's for sure. Just imagine you guys offer sheeted by Toronto. Yeah. That would be some funny stuff. <laughs> some crazy stuff. All right, so we have, a, we have about a minute left in the show. Uh, we're just going to uh, just throw out two quick points from the NHL draft to finish it up. So uh, center Quinton Bayfield was the second overall pick uh, by the Los Angeles Kings. He was the first, the highest uh, selected African American player ever. I did, I did not even know he was African American until I saw that 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 stat. I I knew the name, you know. You lead, oh, lead you the, thought he was like Afro Canadian. Like you, you you read the list of names and you read the the different things. You know, you don't you don't know that they're you know you don't you know. If uh, you see, like, they're Canadian or you see the name, you're like, oh, maybe he's yeah. Russian, maybe he's Czech Republic, whatever. But, you know, I didn't really know that until I actually saw the stat and I actually saw him. I'm like, oh, wow, all right. Wow. So, uh, you know, because I just read up on the prospects and things like that. I'm not really too, like, I don't watch, like, different foreign games and stuff like that. But I, th- I thought that was an interesting tidbit. Um, but then, um, who was it? Uh, Seth Jones was picked fourth uh, overall, I remember, yeah. by, uh, yeah. by the Predators at the time. So uh-huh. I guess he beat yeah. that record, if that, if that was a record, I don't know. But and then um, in the second round, the Montreal Canadiens uh, they picked 47th and 48th back to back. The first per, uh, they picked uh, Luke uh, Tuch, Tuck, Tuck, yeah, uh, who was a uh, who's the brother of uh, Alex Tuck from the uh, Vegas Golden the Knights. Vegas yep. Golden Knights. But then um, their second pick was John, well, Jan Mysek. Yeah, my sack. So my sack. in that order is basically touch my sack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So big ups to the uh, Montreal Canadiens for making that happen. <laughs> yeah, they're they're going to be a tandem, and then I'm, hopefully they play on the same line too. Oh my god! Great. And then the, yeah. the, the, the way that they could freaking market like just that joke off itself. And then if if you know like Tuch ends up getting the the first the goal, and it's from my sack. You know,